So, uh, I am indeed Jussi Nikanderas. Those of you who have very like, sharp eyes might, might see there on the bottom left. Anyway, uh, before I begin at the actual thing, a couple of definitions. So, I think all of us are familiar with open data, but here we are, in this presentation, we are kind of like thinking this very strictly. So, we use the open uh, data initiative definition of what's a real open data. So, open li license, anyone can use it without any restrictions. That's kind of like real open data. And then, the change political environment. This is the uh, threat assessment of the Finnish Ministry of Interior, uh, published last year. Since not all of you are uh, fluent in Finnish, I have put here translations of the most like important threats related to geodata. And there at the like bottom left and right, you can see things that have become more relevant during the last few years. So, uh, disruptions in various kinds of logistics and then uh, the use of even military force. And now then, uh, into the topic itself. So, there's more and more data, spatial data, created and used all the time. Which actually means that there's also increasing amounts of spatial data that can be considered sensitive. That they may re relieve reveal things that can endanger the society or individuals. Some of these things that can be revealed are relatively like uh, not that threat threatening. We don't have a uh, death ray there at the university uh, observatory, so knowing its orientation is not very uh, important. But here is another example of what we can find from open data. Here are the power lines and transformer stations from southern Finland. So, uh, up, wrong button. Over here is the Helsinki area, so the Finnish capital. This is all available from an open data set by the Finnish uh, government. This might be considered sensitive because disruptions of the electrical network can have widespread effects. So, Open geospatial data has been mainstream in Finland for over a decade, but the recent years have caused actually tremendous changes in the geopolitical environment. The war has started in Ukraine, meaning that Russia is openly aggressive against its neighbors. And because of that, Finland joined NATO after decades of debate whether we should join the alliance or not. This has changed the situation, meaning that we need to reconsider the role of open data in the geospatial data ecosystem. Because of this, we made a research with two research questions. This was focused in fin uh, from a Finnish point of view, but we tried to find out what kinds of threats are related to open geospatial data and how these threats can be mitigated and managed. And our method was uh, a literature review, and then we uh, interviewed over 20 experts, mainly from the Finnish public sector. Everybody was Finnish expert, but some of them were also from the private sector. We used semi-structured group interviews with three initial questions listed here. Then we analyzed the uh, interview results, created a synthesis of the answers, and then further refined this uh, synthesis with a panel of different experts, also all from Finland. And that's how we created the results here. And uh, when we think about what sort of threats are related to sensitive spatial data, then one way to categorize it is what sort of things can be threatened with the use or this kind of like malicious use of uh, spatial data. Here are five different categories of things that malicious actors may uh, affect. The most important in our research were the first two, so critical infrastructure and important infrastructure. Uh, industrial espionage is also important, as is personal privacy and risks to what's, what can be called soft targets. Personal privacy was uh, 
out of scope for this research mainly because personal privacy is something that has been taken like very seriously in Finland for the op also in the open geospatial data uh, ecosystem. So we have relatively or very good best practices how to handle personal privacy. On the other hand, things like critical infrastructure or soft targets have not been given as much as attention. And these critical and important infrastructure are those infrastructure that depict locations and information that are related to the maintaining of things that are essential for the society to function. Critical infrastructure are infrastructure that affect things on a national or regional level, and then important infrastructure uh, affect things on a local level. The this, uh, or the categorization is vague. So things are, some things are clearly critical infrastructure, some things are clearly important infrastructure, but a lot of stuff is there in between. If, for example, the uh, water infrastructure in the capital area is disrupted, is this critical? It affects only the capital area but the effects from there are going to spread around the whole country. So it might be important or it might be critical depending on how you look at the issue. And then when we are talking about threats, we need to also think about risks. So threats generate risks and these risks need to be managed. And a risk is a function of a probability of a threat manifesting and the effects of the, or the seriousness of the outcomes of the threat manifesting. So the more likely something is to happen, and the more serious the outcomes, the higher the risk, and therefore we need to have, the higher the risk, the more we need to uh, affect it or manage it. And then there are various kinds of risk management processes that are meant for using, doing this. Now then, the actual results here. So threats in this context come mostly from human attackers. There are also other kinds of threats like natural disasters or accidents or that sort of thing. But here we have focused on threats that have, are caused by other human beings and their organizations. We can roughly divide these threats into two categories. Threats that have significant resources, nation states, large criminal organizations, etc. And threats that have limited resources, like lone wolf terrorists, uh, individual criminals, that sort of thing. And when we do risk management with uh, open geospatial data, those activities may stop or hinder threats with limited resources, but if the threat has significant resources, we can merely hinder it just by uh, managing open data. We cannot stop these kind of threats. And here are some attackers that might uh, cause these threats. So do some sort of malicious activity using open geospatial data. Other nation states might be interested in intelligent gathering. That's what all nations do all the time on each other. This is used for furthering politics and national interests. And again, in these days, also to wage wars. Corporations are after financial gain. Uh, trade secrets, competitive edge, and may use uh, industrial espionage and other unwanted activities also to further their own agenda. Criminals are primarily after financial gain, but also may eliminate their opponents, intimidate their opponents, intimidate the society. Terrorists typically want to create, create fear, uncertainty, and feeling of helplessness in order to further a cause. And then different sort of activists 
are typically after media coverage, uh, fixing injustices and that sort of th things also typically to further some sort of cause. And if we understand these potential attackers, if we understand their goals, then we can better secure our data because we can only find weaknesses if we know what the data might be used for. And now then, how can spatial data uh, help these kind of malicious actors? There's always possible threats related to useful spatial data. We cannot escape this. If the data is useful, it can be misused. The usefulness of spatial data is very strongly based on data quality. So if we look at quality characteristics, things like completeness and logical consistency, accuracy and temporal quality, attribute data quality, all increase the usefulness of the data for various different purposes. And the more useful it is, the more potential threats might be related to it. A lot of open data is maintained by public sector and at least in Finland, public sector open data is required to be accurate and complete. And if it is created by the national government, as opposed to single municipalities, it also typically covers the whole country, which makes it very useful a lot of, for a lot of different purposes. However, compared to other data sets, this kind of public sector data may have a worse temporal quality because of these requirements for very good accurateness and completeness may make it uh, more laborious to produce. So for example, public sector data sets might be published less often than other comparable data sets that don't have this requirement to check that everything is accurate. And now then the risk management methods. So if we want to have open spatial data, meaning that the data is still available for use without strong restrictions. Then the most methods we have are related to monitoring or then limiting the data itself somehow. We can also limit the availability of the data, but in that case we are kind of like sliding away from open data because open data should be available for use for everybody. One way to do is to limit the quality of the open data. So for example, if we have building data, where we have in the initial data set, we have very uh, detailed uh, attribute information about the buildings. Then we generalize that attribute information for the open data set. That limits the quality, which may also limit the threats. We may uh, monitor the access to the data, or we may limit access to the data in different kinds of ways, requiring some sort of identification. The identification can be as simple as providing an email address, or as strict as uh, having this kind of like strong identification used. Of course, if you have to use strong identification in order to access some data set, then we cannot say that it is open data anymore. We can also limit access to data sets geographically, saying that, okay, you cannot access these open data sets from Russia anymore. But these are very bad, that's a very bad way of trying to secure your data. It's very technically very simple to, uh, avoid these kind of geographic limitations. However, what's extremely important here is that every time we somehow limit an open data set, then we also affect all beneficial and wanted use of that data. The more limited the access, the more limited the usefulness of the data set, the less additional value we get from publishing that particular data set. 
because the better the quality of the data, the more use cases ca it can be used for. Also, all these limitations will primarily affect threats that have limited resources. Threats that have significant resources can be hindered. They may re need to use more resources to access our data, for example. If they cannot uh, just go and download it itself, they may need to bribe a straw user to get the data for them. But if they have sufficient resources, they will probably be able to do this. Another very important thing is that it's not just the individual data sets. When we can combine the data from several different kinds of data sets, then we can act, get a lot more information out of it. And it's difficult to impossible to prevent potential attackers from gaining more useful information by combining different kinds of available data. We never govern all those data sets. Like here we have open data from Finnish government sources, then there's OpenStreetMap, and this is actually Google Street View. And these threats are a reality. Here are some examples. So uh, a bit over a year ago, a Russian ship spent quite a bit of time in the Baltic Sea near Finnish wind farms. It's near certainty that the reason this ship was there was to map the locations and uh, search for vulnerabilities in those wind farms. This is data that's not available as open data. So by not publishing this data, we actually forced the attacker, Russia in this case, to use more resources in order to gain the information. They had to send a ship there to map everything and perhaps the ship did not find all the relevant information, but we were not able to prevent them from acquiring this information. If the attacker had limited resources, they didn't have access to these kind of ships, then we would have prevented them from gaining this information. Not all the threats are current also. So artificial intelligence is something that is quickly progressing at the moment, at least the different applications. So at least for me, it's currently really difficult to predict what can be accomplished by artificial intelligence in a couple of years. However, if we want to manage potential threats caused by use of AI with geodata, we need to do it now. So for example, this public data, public open data, it has high accuracy and it's very complete. So it might be valuable training data for different kind of AI. Is this something that we need to then take into account? I don't have a clear answer to that. Anyway, conclusions. Open, public sector open data are valuable since they are created by government agencies. They cover the whole quant country in high quality and they have a good coverage. Combining data from several different sources can provide attackers significantly more information than single data sets. So if we try to manage the threats caused by open data that we have, then we need to also consider whether that data is available from other sources. Like that uh, Finnish uh, electrical network example, all that data is also available in OpenStreetMap. So even if we remove that data set from the government open data, it wouldn't increase our security, at least not in the short term. That data is already available in the wild. Which means that if we, need to pro if we want to protect open governmental data, 
we need to do it before publications. So we need to make measures that protect the data related to how it's published. For example, we may modify the open data to remove some information from there. But every time we do that, it's extremely important that we also check how this affects uh, beneficial use cases. And what is needed is some sort of risk assessment procedure that can be used uh, several times regularly. We also need to take into account what happens if we do these risk man management things and we remove, for example, some data from open data sets. And we need to be aware of this data combination and how that is a significant threat. And that's all I had. So thank you for listening. Thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh, I think uh, this, is, this is very welcome. All those kind of reflections in the current uh, geopolitical situation are, of course, something uh, mandatory to do. And uh, thanks a lot for that. Are there any questions from the audience? Hi, uh, my name is Emil Enström. I'm from Gisbo. I was thinking, uh, since you speak of a uh, Finnish context, that in the Finnish context, I feel like there's a lot of uh, that politicians can basically say, uh, we do this for security measures, and then they can uh, try to get a law passed and, and so on. And do you feel that this is driven? Because I, I, I believe it might come from a fear uh, in the public that uh, there's a war uh, and uh, so on. Sorry, I have a really hard time hearing the. Uh the echo here is really bad. Ah, um, uh, could you take the mic a bit away from your mouth? Maybe like that this? helps. Better? Okay, now it's better, thanks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was saying that uh, since uh, in Finland, in the Finnish context, mm. you can basically say, uh, politicians say, for security measures, we can make this law pass and so on. Mm. Uh, th this uh, is, is kind of uh, w what's going on right now. And then I was thinking that do you feel as a, an academic that we're making two like uh, fast decisions on this that we should be thinking more about how to actually go about especially regarding geospatial data but also other security measures that we take right now in, in like the political sphere I can only talk about open data here really but uh, open data is already available that should be kind of like considered lost in the sense that potential attackers have it so uh, if we have already published something like the electrical network data, then we don't need to like, or we don't get any benefit if we would just suddenly yank it away from the internet. But we can get a lot of like uh, unwanted side effects when beneficial use of that data is certainly not possible. But on the long term, we really need to think about what we want to publish as open data. Because even if the like, current electrical network is available, the electrical network slowly changes. So within five to ten years, the uh, current uh, data sets start to be sufficiently out of date that using them for uh, planning, for example, wide-scale invasion, is no longer as uh, efficient as it is today. But it is very dependent on what sort of data we are using. Like electrical network data changes relatively slowly on a national level. At least in Finland, we have a mature electrical network. Some other data sets might change significantly faster, where the kind of like the data quality then degrades uh, more quickly. Yeah, I had a I had a also similar question in this context. Um, have you? Um, I know in Estonia we occasionally hear in the news there was another cyber attack, and um, but Estonia weathered it really well because they're used to it sort of. And um, do you, from you personally, from the from your work, have you seen those type of attacks or something on on servers that you work with or something like that? Well. 
I know that there have been attacks. In the news re recently, there have been uh, like attempts and also successful attempts to introduce into or break into uh, water management systems, especially in southern Finland. So that sort of threats are clearly and presently there. And I also know some actual attacks, but uh, that have been like already happened, but I promised not to talk about the details. Any additional quick question? Quick question? Oh. We say it's the last one, and then please quick answer, because yeah. we need to close. Yeah. It's not a question, it's just a quick comment. I've been coming to Postology for more than a decade. It's the first time I see a presentation like this. And I'm absolutely appalled. I'm not being judgmental at all. Mm. And I would just like to thank you for bringing up this discussion and this thing here in Postology. Because indeed, the world is very different from what it was. Thank you. You're welcome. And once more, if we do these kind of things, we need to be really careful how we manage the threats, because we can also make a lot of damage that way. Thanks again for the very interesting session.